Okay, I created my web project just as I showed you in the screenshots on the uh, web page. And so I want to kind of take apart this web application and show you the parts that actually um, have to do with ASP.NET membership and security. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the main web config for this file. So that's down here at the very bottom. I'm going to open that up. And if you take a look at this, I'm going to give myself all the room necessary here. If you take a look at this, the first thing we notice is the connection strings area down here. And there's a connection string already created. It's called default connection. And what that points to, you're going to notice it points to something called local DB version 11.0. What that actually is, it's a SQL Express database. SQL Express comes with Visual Studio. So this is a SQL Express database that your application is going to use by default to allow you to store your users, profiles, roles, and all of the security information that we're going to need in order to make this application um, secure. Now a little later on what we're going to do is we're going to override this connection string and instead of using a SQL Express database what we're going to do is we're going to use an actual SQL Server database. Um, so we can just trust for now that all of the users we create are going to go into this database called ASP.NET, Karen Sample, blah, 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 blah. And it's going to go to our local, uh, local DB drive, which actually is in the same directory as this application. So let's move down a little bit farther. And I want to point out to you the membership area. So here, right down here is a membership uh, element. And then right below that is something called the providers element. This little piece right here is what determines what your logins and their passwords, and in other words, all the properties of your users are going to be. And so I'm just separating some of this out so you can see it on the screen. And I just want you to see this so you know that it's not all smoke and mirrors when you create users and they're required to have a password that's six characters and they only get five attempts before we lock them out. It's all done right here with this element and these attributes. So the first thing that we're going to look at is this is using the default membership provider, which just means that it's using the built-in ASP.NET series of objects and methods and properties and events that allow us to secure applications using the membership uh, database. The connection string, see it says default connection. And remember, we looked at that up here. That's this database. Whatever database is referenced here in this connection string is the database that's going to hold all of our membership information, meaning our users, roles, passwords, etc. The next thing says enable password retrieval equals false. What this really means is, is that by default, the passwords that you store in this database are going to be encrypted and they're going to use a salted hash, which means that we can't unencrypt them. That in order for a user to change their password, we can't retrieve it. They actually have to change it. So that's what this means. If you set this to true, then what happens is the membership programs will actually simply encrypt the password and they won't salt it so that you can unencrypt it and the user will be able to retrieve their password if necessary. So this is the sister to that and it says enable password reset equals true. So we kind of want these to be the opposite of each other. If you set this to true, we want reset to be false. And then if this is false, then of course we want to be able to set reset to true. You can require that if a user 
uh, forgets their password that they have to answer a question and I'm sure you've encountered this on the web before and notice this is set to false initially which is fine we'll just leave it that way requires unique email by default it's set to false and that means that two people can have the same email address and for our testing purposes we're going to leave this to false but you may want to set that to true in production because you really don't want to have the same person in your user database twice with the same email. Max invalid password attempts equals five and they're very serious about this. So this means if you try to log in to a website and you put the wrong password in over five times, it's going to lock you out and it will require an administrator to go in, someone who has permissions to the database up above to be able to go in there and change this little flag so that you're no longer locked out. The minimum required password length is six. So if you want to make that smaller, if you want to make that bigger, you can here. Minimum required non-alphanumeric characters. This means if you want to require that there are some special characters in the password, you can do that. Right now it's set to, to none. And then password attempt window is 10, means it's going to show up it may show up 10 times maximum. So these are all of the properties about your users. You set them right here in web config and the main web config. So now let's go back to Solution Explorer and let's go look at some of the other stuff you get when you create one of these web applications from the template. The other thing that you get is you get an account folder. And inside the account folder there's a pre-written login page. There's a manage page and this page is for you to be able to change your password if you need to. There's an open authorization providers page and this is if you're going to get into configuring uh, providers other than the membership provider. So let's say you want your users to log in with Facebook. This is where you would allow them to do that. You would use the open authorization providers. The register page is for you to allow users to register themselves and create new users. And then finally I'm going to look at this web config. Notice that this web config, there's a special web config just for account. And what's in this web configuration file is this location path manage.aspx. What this is saying is that if you want to browse this page, manage.aspx, that you need to authenticate yourself. And that's what this means right here, where it says authorization, deny users question mark. The question mark here means deny anybody who wants to view the manage.aspx page unless they've logged in first. If you want to protect assets on your web application, you're going to place them in a folder, just like they've placed all these pages inside of a folder. You're going to add a web config to that folder, and you're going to have code that looks something like this, so that you'll have to make sure that the user has logged in before they can access anything in that folder. Now this is how you can restrict a single file in that folder, in this case account. And what that means is that users can look at login, register, uh, register external, and the rest of these files without logging in. So I'm going to cover creating a, cr a protected folder and contents in just a second. In the next video, I'm going to cover protected content in this web application so we can see how that works.